All right, so we're gonna take a um, herbarium sample of this plant, Cortadaria celloina. And herbarium sample is basically a pressed um, bit of this plant uh, that gets deposited in a library of other pressed plants, a herbarium. And they're really good historical records of where plants are, what they look like at a certain time. They're also great references if you need to identify another plant, you find some species looks maybe like this, you can go to the herbarium and say, well, is it this species or the other species? Well, it's a great thing to do. Um, or maybe we, did, we figure out 10 years from now, there's actually a third species here. Right. So we can go back and see, was this guy species A or species B, even though we originally called it just one species at, at some point in time. Right. So the, the idea of doing this is kind of simple, but like everything, it's developed a sort of a whole fetish around how you, how you do it and how you do it right. Particularly, you know, botanists get very fetishy yeah, about Yeah, botanists things. are very so strange whole, people. Like, we uh, know this. culture around pressing these things. But basically what you're going to do is you want to get, uh, so key identification things are usually always, for plants, it's not really the leaves, it's more the vegetative structures like the flowers. So. Ideally, you want to get a plant that is in flower like this one, and you want to give a kind of a, include that flower, but also a representative portion of the plant that includes all the other potential identification marks, like in grasses, the these hairs that form at the at the leaf blade junctions here are oftentimes a good identification clue. Um, also, just the color the color of the leaves, mm -hmm. how wide they are, that sort of thing. So basically we're gonna take a, a bit of this plant, probably this bit right here, and, uh, and press it in our press. But also the other kind of a very important thing besides the collection itself is all the information about where you got it. So what, what date it was, um, where it is, GPS location, coordinates. Take a GPS coordinate now, since it's easy to have your, take a picture, take a picture of it. Um, sort of, you also want a description of where the kind of both physical and biological situation in which it is in, sort of what community it's in, whether species are around there, is it just a single individual, or is it a huge, you know, population of the individual, all that sort of The natural history of the area. Right. And so a lot of those can, uh, a chunk of that will go into the label itself that gets affixed to the plant and deposited in the herbarium. Um, so we want to take that information as well. Cool. All right, let's go do it. Oh boy. Sample number one. There's a bug in here, I think. That's it. No, it's the leaf. Sample number two. I have exactly like party pom poms. Party pom poms. Invasive species pom poms. Look at that great press you have, John. I like that kit. That's nice. It's like it's very sciencey. You must be a professor. <laughs> All right, and Huggins's method. He claims to have which these. you know could be suspect. <laughs> Is so. They have these corrugates, like basically pieces cardboard. of cardboard, right? Sometimes, um, like the tropical botanists will use uh, like aluminum because the in the tropics, right? You know, rot traipsing through these will rot quickly, but aluminum gets real heavy. Um, and then, and so this is wood. So when we tighten down the strap, there's something that's something hard that's yeah. that's uh, can be squeezed. And then, basically, we have a piece of newspaper. <laughs> Which the kids right. don't know what that is. None of my students know what that is, but and um, the uh, the UCLA Bruin is the perfect size because a normal newspaper wall, yeah, right, too big, that too when small. When you used to have yeah. newspapers, they were too long. But the Bruin, I don't forget what you call this. There's some special right name for this size, size, like A17 4 yeah, or something. It fits perfectly in the press. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, so and the and out of curiosity, what date is on that Daily Bruin, John? Uh, Monday, June 12th, 2017. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, so Tom went to work on that day is what you're telling me. <laughs> so the kind of the, um, the, is, the safest and easiest thing to do is to write on the piece of paper the, the what specimen this is. So 
Uh, first we went the date, so this is the 16th? Fi 15th. Wait, is it the 15th? 15th. That was Jesus, 16th. Sorry. <laughs> September 16th, so 2018. 16, 2018. And I actually... So ideally, if you're a real botanist, wow. you, you have a notebook. Wow, in which you are a real botanist. You put every single thing you've collected sequentially. <laughs> and so you would follow, you say like, no matter where you were, this would be but like, you look to see Sample number 304. Right, and this is number 300, and so you'd mm. put that number there, but I'm not a real botanist, so. Um, you only so play one last, on TV. I just did site 11, so this is, I'm going to call this site 12. Okay. Site 12. And this is a C. Celoana girl. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. so now I can connect this to my notebook That's that has correct. all the other information in it. Excellent. All right. And then... Gabriel seems to have abandoned us in, this, in our time of need. Oh, okay, let's get put the tools away. It's important. C. Celoana, or Quaternary jubata is actually one of the harder things to press because now, yeah, now, nice... now this is also we should say this is the size of the blotter of the paper yes. we're eventually going to mount so it on this the thing archival has to paper. fit on the mounting thing right, right? And all right now you see we have an issue because <laughs> this thing is basically the size of the whole right sheet, right and you want right. to get some of the leaves in there and right. the, and the right, stem right, right. in there so now we have a problem so this. And we should say universal size of this is not like a UCLA or barium size of uh, yeah. a, a sheet. This is the, the the generic herbarium paper size. So the, actually, so let me do this. For, so I have to do some preparation here because we have. I learned this from Barry on the, the great Barry Priggy. The great Barry Priggy showed me this, and I told Huggins about it. He was very jealous that Barry had. <laughs> It showed me this thing. So I'll show you what these are. Wow. This is Useful very... This looks like a Vietnam veteran kind of thing going on here. <laughs> so Barry must have picked this up at the great Santa Ana Botanical yes. Garden, I suspect. A real botanical garden. Right. Alright, so we have to make this fit, so... Just go at it, and we're gonna break it. Oh my God! You're gonna break this important piece of archival plant material. Um, oh my God! One. Wow. Now it still doesn't wow. fit, so we have to go back the other way. Oh my go. God! Bum. Oh, two breaks. All right. So now, <laughs> now it fits. We made it. Fit. Wow. But now I'm just gonna do that. Oh right? man. And it's gonna Jenga. stick out your press, Jenga. and you're gonna look yeah, like you're, you're you an are idiot. Screwed. Even it's That's still right. these are sticking out, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in order for it to not be that janky do this <gasps> this would be a poor man's clip and as it were slide this on there and now wow. it doesn't wow. it and do the same now is there some special is this out of some special paper at this point is just regular old paper this is regular old paper because it's not going to be it's not going to be on here for very long well <laughs> you're cutting it just about <laughs> If you were, we're, gonna if you were a real bonus, you wouldn't leave it on very long. So when we actually mount it on to the actual specimen, that is archival, acid-free paper, yada, yada, yada. Even the, the label that you affix to it is, is archival stuff, but this doesn't have to be archival at all because this is what we're going to do is we when a, you put it in the press for to do two things. One is to, is to make this lie as flat as possible. Right. Right. And squeeze it down, but also to to get it to dry. So you know, eventually, once it dries, it will be relatively impervious to rotting and things like that. Because we want this right. stuff to be preserved for in perpetuity. Right. And so, the grass relatively easy. Other plants that have a lot of much higher water content, much more tricky, much more problematic. And also, we're in a pretty good climate for doing this because so like imagine if you're traipsing through the middle of the jungle in. Uh, in Ecuador, cloud forest, right? And you try and press these things, it could rot before wet, you get wet, to wet. <laughs> any civilization. So um, here, um, okay, basically, the the previous specimens I have are now at, at Tom's, Dr. Huggins's house, 
uh, just outside by this pool sitting in the mm -hmm. sun. That's what real botanists do. Right. They do that. Mm -hmm. Have a pool. So you can see how annoying this is because now it's still not even. Like these things are sticking out and it's right. impossible to get them. Right. If you were really sort of expert at this, you could, you could get this to, <laughs> to wrap it around to make sure it stays in there. If you're a real botanist. Yeah, but then I lose patience and I screw it and say, all right, <laughs> it's done. And usually this is nice, usually it's, it's windy. Right, right. Paper right. was wants to fly right. everywhere. And right. You think you're getting angrier by the moment. Right. Oh, this is happening. And so, here's one. And now we also, in addition to the uh, 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 cardboard, uh, we have some foam here as well. Oh, yes. In fact, actually, so this is, I forgot to get out of the car, but I have to go get it. But so, what we'll do is we'll put the foam, rest that foam on top of this one, and then uh, put this one, we need to get another piece of newspaper and get, um, put this one in there, and then we'll put the corrugate on top, and then the, the wood, and strap it down. Again. And what is the purpose of the foam then? We talked about the corrugate, what's the purpose of the, uh, or the cardboard, what's the purpose of the foam? The foam is, um, is just sort of a way of, of separating the um, the the specimens and also um, this is kind of carpet foam and they sort of absorb some of the moisture and so it's before, wicking until, you know, so it's a wicking so oftentimes uh, this is Huggins's method because the, they'll also use sort of blotter paper sort of like 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 thick filter paper felt, kinda, almost like felt sort of paper kind of yeah paper that also makes the sort of um, and there they'll put they'll layer corrugate filter paper that blotter paper, um, newspaper, blotter paper, corrugate, right? Uh, but that's a lot of stuff, <laughs> right? And so this is, it's a way of, he sort of, it's a way more of, efficient. It, more of expanding the capacity of the, of the press. Particularly since we're, it's a, we live, it's in Southern California and we're not trying to collect and keep something that's in a wet environment from cool. rotting, right? Cool. All right, so there you go. So that's our plant press. And then we're done. We take the straps and we strap it down tight, but not so tight as to uh, and, destroy. Um, so in a typical herbarium, or even here, <laughs> UCLA, so at UCLA, there's a, there's a drying oven, basically. It, it's um, basically just a box that has some incandescent. Also another thing, which you may not... <laughs> it's Kids don't know away, what incandescent right? bulbs are anymore. Incandescent bulb that creates heat. And you basically, you just sit them on top. So... A, there's something a real low, warm, gentle heat. Warm. You don't want to. You don't really want to bake cook. these. Don't want right? to cook them. And there's kind of an art to. So how fast you you dry it out is determines how well the colors look like in a nice flower that has cool colors. How well those colors are kind of preserved on the press. Usually the typical thing is you want to do it as quickly as possible, but very gently, because if you do it. If you don't do it quickly, a lot of those colors will, the, the rotting process, those are, are real susceptible, just getting like muted Destroyed. out. And, yep. Uh, but if you do it too quickly, like if you stuck it in an oven, that wouldn't, wouldn't be good off, because a lot of times they'll shrivel. They'll shrivel. Um, so you just want it to kind of slowly, gently um, dry. And then the other thing is sometimes when we look at uh, archival spe herbarium specimens, we'll see there'll be a piece of paper or, or, or the archival sheet, and then there might be an envelope, let's say with seeds or other particularly uh, 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 sensitive or small uh, structures that might sort of flake off or crack off. Right. So uh, are, the, are you typically gonna put stuff into a sleeve to start with, or is that gonna be after we first um, do the first pressing here? Uh, it's usually after the, we'll probably put stuff in a, either, either an envelope now or in a separate press, and and then add them to the. Um, but often you'll put them in the same thing, like you put them in an envelope and put them in the same piece of of newspaper. But right. the other thing is, sort of now, in addition to collecting these, folks are also routinely collecting leaf samples for genetic analysis. And that's sort of a separate thing that is sort of off, is done in conjunction with this as well. Cool. Are we gonna do that next or are we gonna do that after? Yeah, we'll do that next. Okay.
All right, cool. So that that's how to how to press a a cortadaria, a a a tall, large sample of grass uh, for an archival specimen. Excellent, Dr. Lam Jam, John Lambrinos, Oregon State University, cortadaria invasive species uh, expert uh, worldwide. We're working with folks all across the planet to provide you with. Yes. <laughs>